Last time on Project Lightning. Yeah, I think I messed up. Welcome back. I know it's been a little while. Today what I'm moving on to is this absolute disaster of a wiring mess. This has prevented me from being able to put a passenger seat in the car, uh, along with all of the other interior, for about the last year as I've been focused on some other things. So now I'm ready to get back into it. And what I have done is I've gone through and I've identified uh, four of these modules that are in the car. Each one of them has, you know, dozens of wires uh, going into them. And these I've identified uh, because they are all on the same CAN bus. So I am going to take these and cut all of the wires and move them over behind the passenger seat. Uh, previously behind the passenger seat was a number of modules from the original DeLorean uh, that handled the engine, um, basically the engine ECU is in there. So I'm going to grab these four modules that I've confirmed will fit over there and uh, move them there and rewire everything. In my process of attempting to rewire the car um, about a year ago, what I was doing was going one by one. Um, it's like that old adage, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Well, how do you rewire a car? One wire at a time. And that's true, but if you start at a module and say, hey, I'm gonna move this to the place that it's gonna go, and then you cut all these wires, you know, one by one, and then you move the module over to where it is gonna be, and then you rewire all those things, and then you move on to the next module, and you cut each of those wires, and then you find out, well, actually, those wires were connected to the first module, and so now what you end up doing is taking the same wire and cutting it and splicing it and cutting it and splicing it and cutting it and splicing it. So all four of these modules are on uh, the, the main CAN bus uh, in the Chevy Bolt. And that means each one of them has two CAN wires coming in and two CAN wires coming out. And they're all gonna be just sitting right next to each other. So those CAN wires can be six inches long or something rather than cut, splice, cut, splice um, a bunch of different times. Uh, so the new adage is uh, how do you eat an elephant? Well, you cut it into small pieces first and then you eat it one bite at a time. But the cutting is all at once. So it's still kind of the same way, except instead of having an elephant and then you're cutting and eating one, one bite, it's, it's all the cutting and then all the eating, but like later, once it's all cut. The DeLorean is the elephant. One thing I do want to point out here before I get started too is if you were to actually look uh, in here, you do see that it is just a mess of wires and it's mostly wire. It's not mostly modules. Like yes, there are, are a number of modules here. You've got these four. There's also the, the body control module, the BCM right down there, which has like a hundred wires going into it. Uh, but then you also have a bunch of things like this. Uh, and this is not a module. Uh, it is just a harness connection that goes from one harness to another harness. And it's got dozens of wires plugged into it, but it doesn't need to be there. So in the process of this, I'm literally just going to remove these entirely. They're just not gonna be there anymore. Um, so a lot of what is over here is just that, and it's just wire. Some of this wire just literally wraps around and goes nowhere. Uh, so really, I think this is gonna cut down a ton of this spaghetti that is over here. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Let me show you the process that I'm using to handle these wires and label them. So let me start here. This is uh, the chassis control module known as K38, which this is tip number one. Find all the modules, uh, determine what they are and label them. Uh, so this is the chassis control module. It was under the dash. I didn't know what it was initially, so I just put, it's a module under the dash. Uh, but then once I was able to determine it was K38, uh, I put that on there. And then um, here is the connector for K38, which again, I mark that. 
um, and there's also a label on the bundle of wires coming from it. So out of this, I determined that the next wire that I want to remove is this uh, right here. And I'm pretty sure this is a CAN bus line because it is a twisted pair of cables and all of the other wires like this in the car are CAN bus lines. So what I've done is I took K38 and you'll notice that I put a little yellow mark there and also I put a little yellow paint mark on the inside as well. That is pin one. And then now I'm gonna go over to my laptop here and I'm gonna show you that I opened the service manual. This is the K38 chassis control module and you'll see the pin out diagram right there. So pin number one is this uh, on the lower left side right there. And then I can count the pins or I can look at the colors. Uh, so you can see here, this is a blue uh, with a yellow on there on that side. And then the other one is just a white wire. And I can also tell just by looking at where the pin connector is, which, which pin number that is generally um, by counting you know, over here and looking at the pin diagram. And so I've done that and I've determined that we are looking at that right there, the high speed GM LAN serial data minus and plus, which is wire 6106 and 6105. You can see the colors there. It says uh, the, the minus line, uh, the low line is white and the high line is blue and yellow. That's what BU slash YE means. The most important thing in here is those two numbers, 6106 and 6105, because those numbers uniquely identify which wires are in this. <laughs> and so that allows me to search for 6106 and 6105 and actually see what it is connected to. Uh, so let me go ahead and first, I'm going to trace these this wire and I'm just gonna pull on it and you can see that it goes this way uh, and goes over here and then over here. And yes, this is just a very manual process. And then I get to this harness right here. Uh, just to be a little helpful, um, I had this marked on the other side, but I've moved the mark here. So I've identified this as X200. Um, and here is the wire coming in. This is the wire that we were just looking at coming in from K38. And what I've done is I figured out where those pins terminate here. And then I found them on the other side and pulled this wire out. And then I can also continue the process. And you'll notice that it goes to this wire and this wire is one I've already extended. Yeah, so this goes to the steering system, uh, which is way back up there. So I've already identified this. So now that I've identified where this goes and where this goes, I don't want to have this connector here uh, ever. Um, my intention is to completely remove all these. So I'm going to cut this wire and cut this wire, and then we are going to label them. I've got this handy dandy label maker here. And I purchased these. This is heat shrink tube uh, in label maker form. And so it just goes in here and it's just got a spool of labels and I can print things out. So I printed out GM LAN 2 to K38 for one side and GM LAN 2 to K43 steer because it's a steering system on the other side. And now I'm going to cut the wires and wrap them in heat shrink tubing. And this makes it a million times easier down the line when I go to hook these all up. Okay, so I have heat shrunk this label onto here. This is the one coming from K38. And you can see, you know, this is, I don't know, five feet, six feet of cable that just got removed just from this one operation. Here's the other side of it. I will throw it away <laughs> over there and then move on to the next one. Uh, and that's really what this process is. It's just that repeated over and over and over again. I'm about 16 hours or so into this rewire job. And this is looking so much better than it was before. You can see like most of what you see here is the ground <laughs> rather than just seeing wires. There's just a lot removed. 
What I'm working on right now is trying to make a separation between all of the stuff in the front of the car and all of the stuff in the rear of the car. And as you can see, there's really not that many wires that are remaining, um, like let's say maybe 20 um, that are actually coming from this into this area. All of these I'm going to cut and splice and get completely disconnected. And then everything on this side, I'm basically just gonna push it under the dash and worry about that in the future. Um, and so I'll probably do that as a component of this rewire as well, but for right now, I just wanna get this all disconnected. Um, the main wires that I've got left, which is great right now, is that I can actually see things and find a bundle of wires and say like this bundle of wires, uh, I don't know what the individual wires do, but I can see two of them go to this thing and the other five or six of them go to the BMS, and I can just see that now. Uh, whereas before, that was basically impossible. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna continue on. Like I said, I'm about 16 hours into this right now. Um, don't look over there. Um, it is looking much better, but still very, very scary. I have a great example to show you of how I'm reducing the amount of wiring in the car. Um, I'm looking at these three wires right here. Now I've already had to cut and splice this wire, uh, it's this bundle right here, um, because it goes to the brake sensor, um, like the brake pedal itself, and it had to get extended to go back to here. So it comes this way, and here's these three wires here, coming through here, and you notice it ends up here at this harness connector, it's X200. And if you trace these wires here, up through this bundle, here's a couple, here's the third one, it goes to the body control module, which means it goes from there, it looped all the way back around here, it was coming all the way back up here, then coming back around to a harness connector, all the way back to the BCM. Eventually, when I put the car back together, the body control module is going to be sitting somewhere in this region, which means all of this extension that I had to do to make this work before just magically goes away. Um, so that's pretty slick and is one of the reasons that I'm doing this. What I've got here in place is the cover board and then uh, under it, I've got the original um, like mounting bracket for the electronics and stuff. It's like the ECU and whatnot. Just because of the way this is sitting, and you know, it's been a long time since I've uh, investigated what this looks like here. I've kind of realized though that I do want this bracket um, or this mounting plate thing because with this in place, so it mounts a screw here, there's a screw back there, and that's pretty much it. It also sits on um, like the, the fiberglass right over here, but there's no screw in it. Um, I have a, a module that I can fit pretty much right in here with a little bit of modification, but it's got a lip right here. And this is where the deck board actually sits. So you really do wanna have that feature of it installed there. Uh, and then it also sits on this piece and currently that's a little bit too high. So I'll pop it off and put it back on there uh, how I want it. Um, but then this sort of middle section is just all wrong <laughs> for me. Like the board sits here on this foam piece and it's got all the you know proper areas to connect to. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm also gonna do a little test fit to put all of my modules uh, onto this plate just to, just to see how it'll fit uh, to know where to go. I've thrown the modules back in here with the standard plate uh, and this is gonna fit like perfectly. Uh, so what I've decided is that I, I don't think I'm actually gonna cut this entire um, piece under here out because I can just mount this plate directly to this um, on the top. Uh, it'll fit there no problem. Uh, this piece, I think I can actually mount on the underside uh, with a hole. This already, already has this hole here. If I expand that a little bit, I think I can make it so it comes out here um, and then the connector, you know, is around it. And then this will sit here. And I think there will be enough of a gap, enough space here for this connector to come out. If I cut that hole just a little bit bigger, 
then over here, um, I've got this little module just kind of sitting here because there's tons of space. Uh, I, in fact, I think I could fit it back here too. So that's an option. And you can see that there's this little module guy down here. He is going to come up through that hole. And then finally, this module, um, which is the hybrid powertrain control module. I will need to do a little bit of modification here. There's this section that needs to be, um, I think I'm just gonna cut this and then bend it down because um, I don't need this rail this entire uh, distance. Uh, the other option is I could cut a hole out here and then slot this in the place. And then on the uh, opposing side, I will also need to cut out a little hole there so it will slip in. But yeah, that's gonna work just fine. So I'll just keep this bracket um, and I'll just cut it up uh, because I kind of need the dimensions, um, how it fits right now. So yeah, that seems like an easier way of doing it than trying to make something from scratch. Uh, and then again, yeah, I will have to cut this little piece off, but yeah, all is well. Okay, so I will do that. Here is the final bracket design to hold the modules. I cut spaces for them, installed riv nuts so that I could use screws to hold them into place, and I painted the bracket black. Ended up being able to fit four of the modules here, and I wasn't able to stack the two because there wasn't enough space once the connectors were in place. I also employed 3D printing to make some standoffs to make sure that they were located exactly where I wanted them. Here is the final result with the modules in place. Getting back to the wiring, this process resulted in a small bin full of wires that were completely cut out of the harness. Some of those were wires that I realized I didn't need, like a few wires for the rear doors or airbags, but most were wires that were connecting from one harness to another harness. I removed seven of these huge harness connectors, some of which had over 30 wires going into each side. I also ended up with a large bin of all of the connectors that have every wire labeled. I didn't trim any of the wire from these, so when I go to install them, I expect I'll be able to trim off a ton of additional wire. In total, I used 20 cassettes of heat shrink label that come in at seven dollars each and here is the final result of roughly 24 hours of work over the course of three weeks just as a reminder that this is what it looked like when i started The car is now finally in a place where I can access the floor. Uh, if I wanted to, I could put the seat in, for example. Um, so that's really good. Now I need to focus and determine what my next steps are. So I've got a couple of different options here. Option one is I can basically continue down this path and take all of the remaining connectors and pieces from the, the handful of modules that I still have here and break them apart and disassemble them. However, I don't know right now if I actually need to do that. And the reason is because I don't know where any of these modules are going to live. I think the next step is I need to determine the position of the remaining modules that I have here. And uh, with that comes the need for me to know how much space I actually have. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of reassemble some of the interior mainly the dash and then the HVAC system. Sitting right here in this region is a big HVAC unit that handles your heating and cooling and everything. And I do want to bring that over because I have to have the cooling system in order to do DC fast charging. And I, I want to be able to do that. However, uh, a test fit show that that is not going to be a simple endeavor. And with that, I think I'm gonna call this episode finished. Uh, if you wanna see how this progresses, please go ahead, like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you next time. This is Project Lightning. <laughs>